Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to uh, present this work on the automated analysis of TLS 1.3. So Cass and I uh, did this work at the University of Oxford. Uh, I was his PhD student there, and currently I'm at the MPI for software systems in Germany. And uh, Sam and Tyler uh, work uh, at, uh, or are PhD students at the Royal, uh, Royal Holloway University of London, and they uh, did uh, part of their, uh, this work there, uh, as well as at Mozilla for their internship. Uh, so let me situate our work for you first. Uh, so TLS, as you might know, has a long history of being broken and fixed. And our contribution to this field uh, came about in the year 2015. Uh, so the, the best part of it was spent to analyze uh, TLS 1.3. And in October, the cool stuff started to emerge. Uh, so what we do are formal methods, uh, in particular, the symbolic verification of security protocols. And we consider our work to be complementary to the uh, provable security uh, work that's being done. And uh, here are four great papers uh, cited. Um, uh, so, so the difference between our work and theirs is that uh, they do a deeper analysis in a way, but we do a broader one where we cover all the uh, different modes of TLS 1.3 and their uh, complicated interactions uh, with each other and with the old um, uh, protocol modes. So this new version of uh, TLS, TLS 1.3, uh, is designed to be more efficient than uh, TLS 1.2 uh, with the three new modes. Uh, so the zero round trip time handshake mode basically allows clients uh, to um, encrypt uh, some application data for servers uh, when they meet again or when they uh, resume a session on a different connection. Um, so this, uh, this uh, encrypted message can be put in the client hello message uh, and so is sent immediately uh, on, on a return visit. Uh, the pre-shared key or PSK mode uh, is a way for both clients and servers to use uh, pre-shared keys that can be established either out of bound or by running the TLS 1.3 protocol. And they're used as building blocks to compute uh, session keys uh, more efficiently so less computation is needed. Uh, lastly, the delayed client authentication mechanism uh, is a way for servers to only authenticate clients when they really have to. Uh, so for example, you can imagine a client uh, browsing through a, a public portion of a website, and uh, then uh, they try to access uh, some uh, secure or sensitive resource or log into a, a secret part of the website or private part. Uh, and uh, only then do the server, uh, does the server need to authenticate them. So our goal was to improve the security of TLS 1.3 by analyzing its specification by using state-of-the-art formal analysis methods and tools. And uh, what we focus on are interaction attacks. So um, we assume that cryptography is uh, perfect or black box. Um, so basically that it works as it should. So either you have a key and can encrypt, decrypt, and sign messages with it, or you don't, so you can't possibly do it. Uh, and uh, we assume that the attacker is a Dolev Yao style attacker, which means that he can position himself uh, in the middle of a connection and then uh, eavesdrop on, uh, tamper with, uh, and inject uh, messages, as well as uh, corrupt the or compromise the uh, long-term secret keys of uh, part protocol participants that aren't uh, directly involved in the session that is under attack. So the interaction attacks, by this I mean uh, uh, inadvertently added vulnerabilities that are exploited uh, due to some sort of uh, you know, composition of, of these different uh, handshake modes. So uh, when we were building a model, uh, for, uh, what we first did was uh, infer a client and uh, server state machine from the specification. And uh, as you can see here, if you start at the initial state for the client, th this is the client state machine, uh, what the client can do is either uh, start a new session by uh, doing the C1 transition. Uh, he can, uh, on, a, on a repeated uh, visit to a server, he can uh, try to initialize a pre-shared key uh, mode. 
uh, which then branches out into two different modes. One is the Diff Diffie-Hellman ephemeral mode, uh, where a Diffie-Hellman ephemeral secret is used uh, for uh, forward secrecy. Uh, and the uh, pure uh, PSK mode uh, is used if uh, forward secrecy is not an issue. Uh, and uh, it actually uh, features even less computation than the PSK DHE uh, handshake. Um, and lastly, there's the known configuration mode, which is basically the zero round trip time mode. Uh, so uh, on a repeated visit to a server, a client can use uh, this uh, server configuration message that he got from a uh, from the server, uh, with which he can, uh, he can use a part of it to, to encrypt uh, application data immediately for the server without going through the ordeal of uh, setting up uh, new uh, TLS session keys. And then there's the question of uh, client authentication. So it's nice and uniform. This is why it narrows, uh, the state machine narrows there. Uh, so uh, the server uh, may ask the client to authenticate it, then they may or may not do so. And the rest is not relevant for this talk. Um, so uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a complex beast. And uh, there can be any number of clients and servers uh, engaging in uh, you know, any number of sessions. Uh, so uh, we really needed unbounded verification here, uh, unbounded in terms of both breadth and depth. When I say breadth, I mean uh, the number of concurrent sessions or parties. And uh, unbounded depth, I mean uh, the number of uh, repeated handshakes and retries due to parameter mismatches. Uh, so we needed a tool, of course. So we encoded our model for use in the Tamer Improver, which is a state-of-the-art tool for automated protocol analysis that's built at um, ETH Zurich in Switzerland. And uh, it supports loops, which is important for the repeated handshakes and retries. Uh, it supports branches, which is uh, very important for the, all this, uh, these uh, modes of the protocol that need to be verified. And uh, it also has state-of-the-art Diffie-Hellman, uh, symbolic Diffie-Hellman support, uh, which allows us to actually uh, consider the core uh, uh, security uh, in, in uh, the TLS protocol, which is based on, on Diffie-Hellman exchanges. However, uh, this tool requires considerable user interaction for such a complex model. However, uh, we use Tamarin to uh, verify the core properties of TLS 1.3 revision 10 as an authenticated key exchange protocol, which means that we prove that uh, the session keys are secret with the forward secrecy included. Uh, so for experts, uh, we don't allow our adversary to uh, to uh, compromise the uh, semi-static Diffie-Hellman uh, exponent of the server. So this is why this is a full kind of uh, perfect forward secrecy here. Uh, then uh, we have the uh, authentication uh, properties. So servers always properly authenticate to clients. And uh, clients, uh, if uh, required and they want to, uh, properly uh, authenticate to servers. And uh, the handshake messages cannot be tampered with without at least one uh, honest participant noticing this. Uh, the last thing that we wanted to check is whether it was safe to include the delayed client authentication mechanism in revision 10. And uh, for this uh, particular uh, version of it, which is uh, the initial proposal, uh, which came about at um, IETF 9.3, which is this unrestricted variant, uh, Tamarin says no. So we managed to use Tamarin to fight an attack on this unrestricted version uh, of the delayed client authentication mechanism. Uh, so uh, this unrestricted version works as follows. So basically a server can, uh, after any uh, handshake, uh, require a client to authenticate. Okay, And uh, if a client decides to do so, then there you have the C auth uh, red transition. Uh, so the attack, uh, uh, the attack that uh, Tamarin finds uh, goes something like this. Uh, imagine Alice, who's a client of a bank, and uh, she wants to connect to her bank. Okay, so She wants to access her bank account. Uh, unfortunately, Charlie at evil.com sent her a phishing email. And uh, you know it looks nice. It's, uh, Alice falls for it. And then she actually decides to connect to him and establish a PSK by using TLS 1.3 revision 10 with the uh, unrestricted delayed client authentication mechanism. So there's the, um, 
that they establish this uh, PSK1 uh, pre-shared key. And Charlie, let's say, knows uh, Alice's bank, mybank.com, which Bob is running. And um, uh, he uh, would ideally like to uh, access her bank account and then uh, transfer all of her money to him. So what he does is uh, connect to mybank.com and establishes PSK2 with Bob. Okay? So far, so good. These two uh, keys are different. Uh, these two sessions are different so, uh, and, and completely legitimate. There's been no funny business yet. Uh, but let's look at the second stage. So imagine that Charlie now cuts the connection to Alice. Uh, and then Alice uh, comes back trying to resume it on a different connection. And uh, she sends her client random value NC in her client hello. She generated a fresh value NC. Uh, Charlie then reuses, he, he's a client in this uh, other session, right? The PSK2 session. Uh, he uh, decides to resume the session with Bob by reusing this NC value. And Bob says, okay, sure, let's uh, resume the session. Uh, and uh, he generates a server random value of NS for his server hello. And uh, Charlie constructs his server hello again by reusing this NS value this time. Uh, so. You might have noticed the uh, session hash values uh, in the bottom there that are filling up. So uh, the, uh, the session hash is basically a hash of a partial transcript uh, in a session. Uh, so uh, in this particular case, uh, it has NC and NS. Uh, however, these have been made the same on, uh, in both sessions. And this is actually enough to make the session hashes in both sessions the same. This is a very unfortunate uh, uh, trait of revision 10. Oh, right, uh, I forgot to say uh, the client finished messages also go through no problem because Charlie knows PSK1 and PSK2, so he can build these confirmation messages. Uh, so in this second part, again, there hasn't yet been uh, anything uh, terribly illegitimate, but. Uh, the, the session hash has been made the same by Charlie in both sessions. Uh, and this is what uh, Charlie will now leverage to steal uh, Alice's money. Uh, so now he uh, tries to log in at mybank.com as Alice, uh, which prompts Bob, who has no idea who he's talking to, apart from the fact that uh, that uh, person is uh, claiming to be Alice. Bob now requests authentication from uh, whoever is on the other side, and uh, it's, uh, it's Charlie, of course. Uh, Charlie now needs some sort of excuse to ask Alice for her authentication. Let's say that she clicked on something at uh, evil.com, or maybe she tried to log in to her account. Of course, that's a bogus form that Charlie made. And uh, Alice says, sure, I mean, uh, I, I should probably authenticate now if, uh, if uh, Charlie says so. So she sends him his, uh, her certificate, a public key certificate, as well as a signature over the session hash and the certificate. And now the problem, uh, uh, so Charlie couldn't possibly forge this message himself because he doesn't have the secret key of Alice. He couldn't forge the signature. But he could reuse it entirely and relay it to Bob as uh, an authentication package. Uh, because uh, the session hashes are the same. And these are the only things that bind, uh, are supposed to bind the signatures to uh, their respective session, which obviously didn't work here. Uh, so when Charlie says, uh, give Charlie all my money to Bob, then Bob will say, sure thing, Alice. Um, so we posted our analysis results and this attack to the TLS mailing list at the end of October 2015. And the responses we got were quite positive. Let me read a few for you. Nice analysis. I think that the composition of different mechanisms in the protocol is likely to be where many subtle issues lie. And analyses like this one support that concern. Thanks for posting this. It's great to see people doing real formal analysis of the TLS 1.3 draft. This is really helpful in guiding the design. This result motivates and confirms the need to modify the handshake hashes to contain the server finished when we add post-handshake authentication. Um, so uh, the thing here is that the uh, session hashes would already have been the same 
if they contained the server certificate. So if you remember, on the one side we had the server Charlie, and on the other we had the server Bob. And their certificates, of course, differ. So um, if already the server certificate was in the client signature, then uh, this attack would have been prevented. Uh, however, what the um, uh, TLS working group actually suggested was to add the full uh, finished message, which contains, uh, which is basically a confirmation of the full transcript, not the partial transcript, the full transcript, uh, into the uh, client signatures, because, uh, uh, I mean, into the uh, session hashes, which would transitively also include them in the client signature, and this would help, of course, bind the client signature to a session, as the name session hash actually implies, of course. So our attack shows that the initial proposal for delayed client authentication uh, is incomplete. Uh, it also shows that it's strictly necessary to bind client signatures to server certificates. And as I said, the working group proposed to include the full transcript in the form of the finished message to the signature to bind the signature to the, uh, the client signature to uh, sessions. And this proposal was actually merged in revision 11, which uh, prevents our attack. Uh, to sum up, uh, this was the first and to the best of our knowledge only comprehensive analysis of the new TLS 1.3 modes and their interactions. And uh, this uh, story actually has a happy ending because we managed to successfully verify re revision 10 by using Tamarin. Uh, and we also used Tamarin to find an interaction attack on the delayed client authentication mechanism. And uh, uh, the uh, proposed fix was uh, verified and also included in revision 11. Uh, for our future work, we would like to update our model and, uh, to, to revision 13 and then verify that, perhaps with respect to a, a stronger adversary model and uh, with some new properties that we have in mind. Um, and let me just say that um, uh, we believe that our work uh, is just one piece of the puzzle, just like Felix said, actually. Uh, and we would like to continue being part of this larger concerted effort of different approaches to hardening TLS uh, 1.3 that we believe uh, all of them are valuable. Thank you. Questions? Hi, so it's uh, pretty fascinating what you can find with tools like Tamarin. Um, the attack you've described, at least in the slide, seems somewhat complicated and using and uses uh, phishing. No, uh, right. And the kind of things you can do with phishing are sort of by themselves uh, mm -hmm. quite complicated and powerful. So I'm curious if there's a way to abuse this kind of uh, weakness that you found without phishing. Well, as long as you have a reason for Alice to connect to a malicious entity, that sh I mean. Uh, she, she doesn't know, of course, that the entity is malicious. If there's anything other than phishing that you can use, then yes. Okay. Thanks. Hi. So I'm Sintra Matsu from Terras Consortium. So could you tell me why so you choose the Tamarin to, the, to this analysis? Uh, uh, sorry? Why uh, could you tell me the reason why you choose the Tamarin as a tool? Who, who ah. so, so the reason is uh, it, it had everything we needed, right? So it had... Uh, uh, inductive reasoning so we could uh, deal with loops. Uh, it had non-monotonic state, which is one of the reasons it was built in the first place, so we could deal with branches in, in, the, uh, in all these modes, right? And uh, the, uh, I guess the third reason I brought up was the uh, symbolic Diffie-Hellman support, which is actually the second of the two most important reasons that it was built. Thank you. Uh, I guess. Uh... Um, is it correct to say you can actually do it without phishing? Because I think actually if Alice just visits any arbitrary website, the attack will still work. So as long as the website is malicious. Uh, sure, that's true. <laughs>